The Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, appeared six times to three shepherd children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta, between May 13 and October 13, 1917. She came to the little village of Fatima, which had remained faithful to the Catholic Church during the recent persecutions by the government. Our Lady came with a message from God to every man, woman, and child of our century. Our Lady of Fatima promised that the whole world would be in peace and that many souls would go to heaven if her requests were listened to and obeyed. She told us that war is a punishment for sin, that God would punish the world for its sins in our time by means of war, hunger, persecution of the church, and persecution of the Holy Father, the Pope, unless we listen to and obey the command of God. And what is still going to happen infallibly in the near future, depending on our response to her requests. On 1916, a year before the apparitions of Our Lady, the children had the apparitions of an angel, the angel of Portugal, to prepare them for the coming of Our Lady. The first apparition of the angel. In the spring of 1916, Lucia dos Santos, age 9, and her cousins Francisco and Jacinta Marto, ages 8 and 6 respectively, were at a meadow with their sheep in Fatima. It started raining and they hid in a small cave to escape the rain. After the rain stopped and the sun came out, they stayed in the cave to eat their lunch, say the rosary and play a game of jacks. They had played but for a short while when on the serene day a strong wind blew that swayed the trees and a sudden white light enveloped them. In the middle of that light appeared a cloud in the form of a young man who said to them, Fear not, I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. The angel knelt on the ground and bowed very low. The children imitated the angel and repeated his words three times. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you, and I beg pardon of those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Then he rose and said, Pray this way, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplications. The second apparition of the angel. It occurred in summer, when the seers were playing near the well of Lucia's house. The angel said to them, What are you doing? Pray. Pray a great deal. The hearts of Jesus and Mary have merciful designs on you. Offer prayers and sacrifices continually to the Most High. The children asked, How must we sacrifice ourselves? The angel said, Make everything you do a sacrifice and offer it as an act of reparation for the sins by which God is offended and as a petition for the conversion of sinners. By this you will bring peace to your country. I am its guardian angel, the angel of Portugal. Above all, accept and bear with submission all the suffering the Lord will send you. From that moment they began to offer to the Lord everything they could to make reparation. They sacrificed themselves by giving their lunch to poor children, by not drinking anything other than passing hour after hour, bow to the ground, repeating the prayer that the angel had taught them. The third apparition of the angel. It occurred in autumn at Cabezo. The children started prayers when they saw the angel, which had in his hand a chalice over which hung a host, from which fell in the chalice some drops of blood. He knelt and repeated three times with the children, Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore thee profoundly. I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles in the world, in reparation for all the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences whereby he is offended, and through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart, 
and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I beg of thee the conversion of poor sinners. Then he rose, took the host, and gave it to Lucia, while the contents of the chalice he gave to Jacinta and Francisco and said, Take the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, horribly outraged by thankless men. Recover their sins and comfort your God. The First Apparition of Our Lady On Sunday, May 13, 1917, the children were pasturing their flock as usual at the Cova de Iria, which was about a mile from their homes. They were playing when suddenly a bright shaft of light pierced the air. They described it as a flash of lightning. It was not really lightning, but rather the reflection of a light that approached little by little. Frightened by the flash, the children looked around at the sky that was clear and bright. Without the least spot of cloud, no breeze stirred, the sun was strong, and there was no hint anywhere of a storm that might be responsible for the flash of lightning. The children, however, thought that they had better head home in case it might start raining. As they descended the hill, another flash of lightning took them by surprise. Panicky with fear, they took a few steps and looked towards the right. There, standing over the foliage of a small home oak, a lady dressed all in white, more brilliant than the sun, shedding rays of light, clear and stronger than a crystal glass filled with the most sparkling water, pierced by the burning rays of the sun. The lady spoke to them and said, Fear not, I will not harm you. Where are you from? the children asked. I am from heaven. The beautiful lady replied, gently raising her hand towards the distant horizon. What do you want of me? Lucia asked. I came to ask you to come here for six consecutive months on the thirteenth day at this same hour. I will tell you later who I am and what I want, and I shall return here again a seventh time. Lucia said, Do you come from heaven, and will I go to heaven? Yes, you'll go. And Jacinta? As well. And Francisco? Him too. But he will have to say many rosaries. In the end, Our Lady asked, Do you wish to offer yourselves to God, to endure all the suffering that He may please to send you, as an act of reparation for the sins by which He is offended? and to ask for the conversion of sinners? Yes, we do, said the children. You will have to suffer a lot, but the grace of God will be your comfort. Then she opened her hands with a loving gesture of a mother who offers her heart. From it, an intense light departed that seemed to go through them. The vision vanished, telling them, Recite the rosary every day to obtain the peace for the world and the end of the war, and she disappeared. The Second Apparition of Our Lady On June 13, 1917, accompanied by about 50 people, the children were reciting the rosary, and there was again the lightning, and immediately after, the lady on the home oak appeared like a maid. What do you want from me? asked Lucia. I wish you to come here the 13th of next month, that you say the rosary every day, and that you learn to read. In succeeding months, I will tell you what else I want. I would like to ask you to bring us to heaven, said Lucia. I will take Jacinta and Francisco shortly, but you must stay here for a long time. Jesus wants to help himself of you to make me known and loved. God wishes you to remain in the world for some time because he wants to use you to establish in the world a devotion to my Immaculate Heart. I promise salvation to those who embrace it and their souls will be loved by God as flowers placed by myself to adorn his throne. Lucia asked, Will I stay here alone? Don't be discouraged. I will not abandon you ever. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and through it will conduct you to God. 
Then she opened her hands and emanated her light on the children. Jacinta and Francisco seemed to be in the light that went up toward the sky, Lucia in the light that spread on the earth. In front of the palm of the right hand of the lady, there was a heart surrounded by thorns that impaled it. They understood that was the Immaculate Heart of Mary, affronted from the sins of men, and she then asked for reparation. The Third Apparition On July 13, 1917, the beautiful lady once again appeared to the children. When Lucia asked what she wanted, she said, I want you to come here on the 13th of next month to continue to pray the Rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war because only she can help you. Lucia asked, Who was she? And if she could perform a miracle so that all present would believe. The lady replied, Continue to come here every month. In October, I will tell you who I am and what I want, and I will perform a miracle for all to see and believe. Lucia asked the lady to fulfill requests people had asked of her for sick people, and Mary replied that some would be cured, but others not, and that all must say the rosary to obtain such graces. She added, Sacrifice yourselves for sinners and say many times, especially when you make some sacrifice, O oh Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. When Mary spoke these words, she opened her hands, and rays of light from them seemed to penetrate the earth, so that they saw a terrifying vision of hell, full of demons and lost souls amidst indescribable horrors. This is the first of the three secrets of Fatima. With a sad expression on her face, the Blessed Mother said to them kindly, You have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out. During the pontificate of Pius XI, when you see a night illumined by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God, that he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, and persecutions of the Church and of the Holy Father. The second secret begins. To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, she will spread her errors throughout the world causing wars and persecutions of the Church. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, and she will be converted, and a period of peace will be granted to the world. At this point, the second part of the secret of Fatima ends, and the third part begins with the words, In Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved. After telling the children not to reveal the secret yet, Mary said, When you pray the rosary, say after each mystery, O oh my Jesus, forgive us, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need. The Fourth Apparition On August 13, there was a large crowd assembled at the apparition site, but the children were prevented from attending at the request of the mayor of Villa Nove de Urem, 
Arturo Santos. In spite of intense interrogations, the children held their ground and refused to reveal the secret, despite temptations of money and threats of painful deaths. On August 19, the children saw Mary, who said, go again to the Cova Diria on the 13th and continue to say the rosary every day. Mary also said she would perform a miracle so that all would believe, but it would not be as grand as planned because the civil authorities had wrongly kidnapped and interrogated the children. Looking very sad, Mary added, pray, pray very much and make sacrifices for sinners, for many souls go to hell because there are none to sacrifice themselves and pray for them. With that, she rose into the air, disappeared to the east. The Fifth Apparition On September 13, a very large crowd had gathered. Again, after the flash of light, Mary appeared to the children and said, Continue to pray the rosary in order to obtain the end of the war. In October, our Lord will come, as well as Our Lady of Dollars, and Our Lady of Carmel. Saint Joseph will appear with the child Jesus to bless the world. God is pleased with your sacrifices. He does not want you to sleep with a rope on, but only to wear it during the daytime. This Our Lady said regarding the sacrifices the children were making for the salvation of souls. Lucia spoke to Mary on behalf of people who had asked for cures and Mary responded, Yes, I will cure some, but not others. In October, I will perform a miracle so that all may believe. With that, she rose, moved to the east, and disappeared. The Sixth Apparition On the morning of October 13, 1917, fear and panic prevailed in Fatima. Rain was pouring from the heavens, a sad beginning for the glorious day promised by Our Lady and the children. The rain, however, did not dampen the spirits of the many thousands of people who came from every section of Portugal to witness the miracle promised. Some estimated the crowd at the Cova Diria this day to be at least 70,000 persons. A professor of the University of Coimbra, Dr. Almeida Garrett, after careful consideration, placed the number at over 100,000. Away at Lucia's home, everyone was disturbed. Senora dos Santos was sad as she never had been before. She feared that this was Lucia's last day on earth. Tears running down her face, she looked at her daughter, who tried to cheer her. Don't fear, little mother. Lucia said with a caress, for nothing will happen to us. Our Lady shall do what she promised. Silence, silence, Our Lady is coming, Lucia cried out as she saw the flash. Our Lady came, her snow white feet rested upon the beautiful flowers and ribbons with which they had adorned the tree. The faces of the children assumed an unworldly expression, their features becoming more delicate their color mellow, their eyes intent upon the lady. They did not hear Lucia's mother warning her to look closely as not to be deceived. Lucia inquired the Queen of Heaven, What does your grace want of me? I want a chapel to be built here in my honor. I am Our Lady of the Rosary. Continue to say the rosary every day. The war will end soon and the soldiers will return to their homes People must amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. Then growing sadder, they must not offend our Lord anymore, for he is already too much offended. Do you want anything more? Lucia asked. Nothing more. Then neither will I ask anything more of you. As Our Lady took leave of the children, she opened her hands which emitted a flood of light. While she was rising, she pointed towards the sun, and the light gleaming from her hands brightened the sun itself. There she goes, there she goes, shouted Lucia, 
without for a moment taking her eyes from the beautiful Queen of Heaven. Lucia did not afterwards remember having said these words, though Francisco and Jacinta and many others distinctly heard her. Lucia said later that she had no recollection of it. I was not even aware of the presence of the people. My purpose was not to call the attentions of the people to it. I did it, carried away by an interior movement which impelled me to do it. The echo of Lucia's shout came back in a huge, immense cry of wonder and astonishment from the multitude. It was at this precise moment that the clouds were quickly dispersed and the sky was clear. The sun was now pale as the moon. To the left of the sun, St. Joseph appeared, holding in his left arm the child Jesus. St. Joseph emerged from the bright clouds only to his chest, sufficient to allow him to raise his right hand and make, together with the child Jesus, the sign of the cross three times over the world. As St. Joseph did this, Our Lady stood in all her brilliancy to the right of the sun, dressed in the blue and white robes of Our Lady of the Rosary. Meanwhile, Francisco and Jacinta were bathed in the marvelous colors and signs of the sun, and Lucia was privileged to gaze upon our Lord dressed in red as the Divine Redeemer, blessing the world as Our Lady had foretold. Like St. Joseph, he was seen only from his chest up. Beside him stood Our Lady, dressed now in the purple robes of Our Lady of Sorrows, but without the sword. Finally, the Blessed Virgin appeared again to Lucia in all her ethereal brightness, clothed in the simple brown robes of Mount Carmel. As the children stared enraptured by these most beautiful heavenly visions, The countless thousands of people were amazed and overpowered by other miracles in the skies. The sun had taken on an extraordinary color. The words of eyewitnesses best describe these stupendous signs. We could look at the sun with ease. It did not bother at all. It seemed to be continually fading and glowing in one fashion, then another. It threw shafts of light one way and another painting everything in different colors, the people, the trees, the earth, even the air. But the greatest proof of the miracle was the fact that the sun did not bother the eyes. Everybody stood still and quiet, gazing at the sun, he went on. At a certain point, the sun stopped its play of light and then started dancing. It stopped once more and again started dancing until it seemed to loosen itself from the skies and fall upon the people. It was a moment of terrible suspense. Many screamed out in terror, many begging for mercy, others praying the act of contrition. As suddenly as it had appeared to be falling toward them, the sun swerved back into its orbit and took its normal place. The rain had stopped and everything, including the muddy ground, was dry. The promised miracle had indeed occurred as promised. Everyone gave a sigh of relief. We were still alive, and the miracle promised by the children had come to pass. The miracle had come to pass at the hour and day designated by Our Lady. Lucia went on to become a nun, and on 1929, Our Lady appeared to her again at the convent where she was staying. True to her word, Our Lady reappeared to Sister Lucia on June 13, 1929, at Tui, Spain, when in a great and sublime vision representing the Blessed Trinity, she announced that the moment has come for God to ask the Holy Father to make in union with all the bishops of the world consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart. By this means, he promises to save Russia. When God sent Our Lady to convey his command that Russia be consecrated, it seems clear that he expected swift obedience from the Pope and bishops. The pastors of the Church, however, chose to delay, and on August 19, 1931, Our Lord himself 
appeared to Sister Lucia in Rianjo, Spain, and expressed his displeasure, saying, Make it known to my ministers that given they follow the example of the King of France in delaying the execution of my command, they will follow him also into misfortune. Our Lord's warning is a great one indeed, referring as it does to his command through St. Margaret Mary the Coke to the King of France that he consecrate his nation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The King chose to ignore the command and thus condemned his dynasty and throne to the horrors of the French Revolution, chaos and the guillotine. The Blessed Virgin's request for the consecration of Russia remains up to now unfulfilled. While several popes have undertaken consecrations of the world since the request was made public, none of these have fulfilled the specific requirements of our Lord and Our Lady's request to consecrate specifically Russia. Until a pope does the consecration of Russia, there will be no peace in the world, as Our Lady promised. Our Lord also told Sister Lucia that in the end, the Pope will consecrate Russia, but it will be late. Also Our Lady said, in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. Let's pray and ask the Pope to do the consecration of Russia, so that there will be peace in the world and the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Amen.